Hey, how's it going, everyone? So what am I working on now? Well, I've got this 2002 Ford Focus. Uh, about six months ago, I think it was, they came in, customers complaining that the battery goes dead. They don't put any mileage on this thing, like nothing. Um, but anyway, they were complaining the battery went, was going dead. We tested it, and I was like, the battery tested a little weak, but I couldn't find any draws. It was charging fine. Um, we put a battery in it just in case because it did test a little on the weak side, but I didn't really think that was going to be an issue. They come back now, and I think they put 100 miles on it in however many months it's been now. Like I said, I think it was six months ago. I'm not positive. Um, I think they put 100 miles on it. This thing does a lot of sitting in a garage. And I had even said, if it's sitting in a garage after a period of time, if you don't drive this thing for two months, it's going to have a dead battery. There's nothing you're going to do about it. It's going to have a certain amount of draw no matter what. So, okay, I'm going to check this thing for a draw now again, and then we're going to check the charging system after I... Check, the, check it for a draw. So the battery's located under here. And you basically got to release the tab. It's down here. Hold on. I needed two hands for that. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect the negative battery terminal. And then we're going to hook my meter up on the amp scale. And I want to see how many amps are coming out of this battery. What I should do is take the key out of the ignition to be on the safe side. Oh, oh, hang on one second. I can't get the key out. Why is that? That was difficult, right? All right. So let me disconnect the negative battery terminal and then let's hook my meter up. With the terminal disconnected, I usually take a pair of ice grips on a top post type battery. You don't have to go crazy and crush it or anything like that. And from here, now we're going to hook up my meter. All right, so let's turn the meter on. Now, the reason for the vice grips is so I have a place to hook my little alligator clip to. See that? I'll go like that. And then I'm going to take the positive and go to the negative terminal. I don't know if you saw that little spark. But that's actually four amps. That's a lot. Now, there's probably modules that are awake right now that need to go to sleep. Uh, this could take a half hour or better. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this thing sit while I do a little bit of cleanup. I'm going to probably set this thing up on a lift so I can put it up in here and just give it a once over since I got it in the shop. Um, but yeah, we're going to let this go for about 30 minutes. And well, let's see what that draw changes to, if it drops down or whatever. 30 minutes later, and we still got a pretty substantial draw. Four amps is a lot. Now, what in the world can draw four amps? Last time I had this, it was a bad alternator that was causing the draw. Uh, I've also seen amplifiers that don't shut off. Uh, this, this is in... This is an older lady's car. I kind of doubt it's got anything other than a factory stereo in it. Um, actually, no, it does have an aftermarket radio, but I don't think it's got anything substantial in there. At least I don't think. <laughs> you never know. She might have like subwoofers and everything else in the back. But I don't think so. So I do need the key to open the trunk. And now, just typical. Typical stuff, nothing spectacular in there. So this is not going to be the stereo. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put this up in the air and I'm going to disconnect the power wire from the alternator, leaving the battery connected. Got to be super careful. I don't want to short anything out. But yeah, I mean, 4.2 amps, that's a lot. I'm really surprised. I know last time I checked it, it didn't have any draw. So it's possible that the alternator, depending on the position of it, could be causing that. I wonder if I could rotate the motor over and see it change. Let me disconnect the wire first. It's easier than going underneath there and rotating the motor. All right, so up in the air. Let's see. The alternator's up there, and there's a 10 millimeter nut on the wire. So let's get that off of there. Like I said, it's a live wire, so you got to be careful. You don't want to short anything out. So I'm going to use a short 10 on a quarter inch 
drive ratchet that has an insulated handle just to be on the safe side. All right, so it's got an insulated handle there. The rest of it is not insulated, but I gotta get up there, which I'm not gonna be able to film and get up there at the same time. So let me get up there with my hand and disconnect it. Like I said, you gotta be careful. It's a live wire. You don't wanna short it out on anything. I had to go a slightly different route. This is extra stubby socket. And I wound up having to take that whole piece off because every time I tried to get that nut off, the whole thing was twisting. I couldn't break it free. So now let's let this thing down and let's see what we got. I got no clue. I'm about to find out with you. Coming down. The meter might have shut off by now. But it doesn't matter. The information is still true. It's still connected. It just shuts it. It just shuts the uh, screen off. Let's see. I thought I heard some beeping when I was under there. Oh, nope. But look at that. It didn't shut itself off. Probably because it's all activity. That's why when it sees a large range of activity. So yeah. Let's put it back up and let's reconnect the alternator. Just to verify. But even still, 136, 120. 40 that's uh that's still a little bit on the high side but well, let's go reconnect the alternator because i want to see what that comes out to because i might want to try rotating the motor over just to see if it changes it okay and there it's back on you can actually see that socket they have on there the nice thing about that is i could put a 17 short stubby 17 on the end of that to loosen it or tighten it so arm up there and get that out. Oops, where are you? There you are. So that's what that socket looks like. I think I got these things off of Amazon a while back. They do come in handy. All right, so coming back down. What am I going to find? When I was putting the nut on, I could hear the meter beeping. You know, beep, 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 beep. So it's telling me that it was making connection, losing connection, stuff like that. So, drum roll, please. Let's see what we got. No, oh, now it's off. Yep, okay. So we do have a bit alternator. Now, what I'm going to try to do is, let me get on the crank and try to rotate the motor and see if it changes what we have. Now I'm going to have to unlock the steering wheel or figure something out. I'm going to take the wheel off and make my life easier. I gotta take the wheel off anyway and change the alternator. All right, so what I'm doing here is I took the shield off that protects the crank and the belts, and I put a socket on the crank. Now I'm gonna put that extension on there, and I'm gonna turn the motor by hand once I let this thing down. I don't know if this is gonna change anything. I really don't. I'm just, I'm doing this out of curiosity. I would have had to take that shield off anyway to see up inside there. So let me set you up on a tripod so you can watch the meter. And then you can tell me what's going on. All right. So I got the meter there. I'm going to start turning the motor over. I can't see the meter from here. Like I said, I don't know if it's going to change anything. You see some variation in it, right? I think I, I think I could see that from here, but yeah, it doesn't really change anything. Okay, it was more just out of curiosity to see if it did. Okay, well, we know we got a bad alternator. So, step one, put an alternator in it. So now I'm going to have to price out an alternator, give them a call, see what they want to do. I don't recall ever doing an alternator on one of these. I'm not quite sure how it's done. If you got to take stuff apart up here and sneak it out, or if you could sneak it out from underneath, it doesn't look like it's all that much fun. I think maybe with this evaporative, evap ugh, evaporative stuff out of the way, it might come out through there. Take the power steering stuff out. I'll look it up to see. Uh, but let me go price one out and let's go from there. I never verified it was charging. Pretty sure it is because there, no, there were no lights on. But uh, let's just double check. So there the meter's hooked up. It's got 12.25 volts in the battery. 
let's start it up. Placing a charging alternator. All right, so I got the alternator on its way. I'm going to end this video here, otherwise it's going to be way too long of a video. Um, I like to try to keep them, if I can, 10 to 20 minutes, and this will probably go close to a, close to a half hour or better if I cover the alternator. So, all right, you saw what I found there. We know it's the alternator. There may be a little something there after that too, because it had that uh, 137 milliamps or whatever that number was. Uh, which is still a little on the high side, if you ask me. You know, not terribly, but a little bit on the high side. But it's definitely not 4 amps. So, all right. I'm going to button this up. I'm actually going to put it on the back lift over there so I don't clog this lift up because this is kind of our main lift. Because, um, like I said, I'm not quite sure what's involved in doing that alternator. But I'm about to find out. Uh, yeah, so if you're getting something out of my videos, hit that like button. If you could, please subscribe. All right, guys, have a great day. Keep wrenching.